Stone and I were called in a case with a woman that was dying of terminal cancer. There was no hope. They sent her home. They sent her home to die. And she was on the bed. I, that's, you know, I mean, they, they gave her a, they had a hospice care. You know what I'm talking about or whatever it was? Okay, so she has, she's on this great big hospital-like bed. She can't move. She's paralyzed in her room, in her apartment. We went over. We lived a long ways away, and, and somebody asked us to go pray for her. Little did we know, when we got over there, that Christians had tried to, tried to get involved. And you've got to watch Christians. Because a lot of them are crazy. Did you all hear what I just said? I want everybody to hear me. You've got to watch out what kind of people come into your life when, you, when you're experiencing some kind of attack like this from the devil. Because they'll confuse you like a rabbit. And this woman was confused because these Christians at her church had come over there to minister to her. And you know what they told her? They told her this had come upon her because of her rebellion and her sin. Now, there could have been some truth in something like that, but the way they did it wouldn't have helped her anyway. You know what I'm talking about? And she was, the first thing she told, she was... She was afraid out of her skull because they told her not only did God put this cancer on her to teach her something, but that she was on her way to hell. That's what they told her. The first thing I said is I got my Bible out. How many know you got to get your Bible out? And I began to take her through the scriptures about salvation. And, she, and all of a sudden, it was like, you know, it took about 15, 20 minutes of going through the scriptures and showing her what the Bible said, not what those idiots said. I used that term on purpose. Then this was a full gospel church, by the way. A lot of full gospel churches are full of something other than the gospel. And she said to me, I, I said, I, I showed her out of the scriptures because faith comes by hearing the word. And she saw it. She goes, she goes, it doesn't make any difference what I did. Jesus paid the price. I said, yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell you. And I, and I led her to the Lord and she had that sweet assurance of salvation and she knew she was, and that, that whatever it was, lifted off of her. She was saved before, but it, this, I don't know, it was a condemnation thing, some kind of demon, it left her. And she was free. Now I said, you're only 40 something years old, why don't you let Jesus heal you? She looked at me, well they told me that God put this on me, you know, and all. And I said, yeah, but they told you this other thing too. I said, here, I didn't have much time, so I take the Word of God. And me and my wife are showing her scriptures from the Word of God over here about what the Word of God says. And all of a sudden, the light went on. You could see, you know, uh, inside of her. It's just like all of a sudden, bam, she started believing this. And I said, the Bible says we're going to, you know, we're, we're elders. We're going to anoint you with oil. We were elders in our church. We're going to anoint you with oil. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. And God's going to raise you up. She goes, Okay. So we went over there, we prayed, just dry, didn't feel like nothing, didn't have any words of knowledge, no great anointing, just prayed for her. And she was swollen up, like she, she looked like she was pregnant with like three children. That's how swollen up she was. And we prayed for her, and I'm honest to God, saw no change, nothing. And we went home, but when we got home, we got a phone call here about a day later, and this, this woman that sent us over to her house, said, this is what happened. This woman, the, all that swelling in her, in her stomach and everything began to disintegrate. It went all the way down. She got up that night out of the bed and fixed dinner, and they all ate. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There's a miracle here. Amen. Are you all listening to me? This is a legitimate, and I've seen lots of these, legitimate New Testament miracle. However, I've got to warn you about something. The Christians came back. Now, we, we lived a long ways away, and we couldn't run over there all the time because I had to work and stuff. They came back, and they started polluting her mind about this again. And she started listening to them, and she ended up sick again. And she ended up dying. And I said to the Lord, because, see, I was very young at these things. You know, I said to the Lord, Lord, what's, what's up with that? You know what I'm talking about? What's up with that? 
I mean, here's a miracle. Because you see, folks, whether you know it or not, you have a lot of authority. You got more authority than you ever dreamed possible. Even sinners have authority. And the Lord said to me, son, my perfect will was for her to be healed. And then he gave me a vision. I haven't had that many of those but he gave me a vision of this, what his will was for this woman. God wanted to raise her up, and he wanted her to travel all over and give her testimony and pray for people in churches. Hundreds and thousands of people would have been touched. But those Christians and their dumb doctrine, and he said, I will require their blood on this on the day of judgment. See, so what we do and what we say about healing is important. Amen. I said that because a lot of you have been lied about. Amen. You've been lied to. And, and let me tell you something. Preachers sometimes don't even know they're lying. Amen. When they get up and tell people, it's not always God's will to heal you. This is not, you know, that kind of thing. Healing passed away. Those things don't happen anymore. They're lying. They may not know it. And a lot of them got good hearts. They don't mean to lie. I'm sure some of them. But they're lying to you. You got to stay away. I'm saying this for the sake of the camera mostly. Stay away from people who don't believe. Don't go back to a church. Do not go back to a church. That doesn't believe in healing when you've been healed. That's crazy. And listen to that mess. And pollute your spirit and your soul. And bring your children into a place like that. My God, man, what's wrong with some of us, right? No, 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 no. We want to go to a place where we can receive from the Lord. Stand to your feet, everybody.